nation wide free covid 19 vaccination campaign at government facilities for those above 18 years is underway we advise our young listeners to get vaccinated and help others get vaccinated we also advise our listeners not to lower their guard as covid 19 remains a threat to our health please stay at home unless it is essential to go out and continue to follow these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two gaz ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene For any covid related information and guidance contact the national helpline numbers 0112397 and 1075 and now the news in detail Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi addressed the 76th session of UN General Assembly yesterday evening it was a message of hope caution and earnesty he warned the global community to be aware of the challenges of terrorism The Prime Minister said that those who use it as a political tool must understand that terrorism is a double-edged sword and can be a threat for them as well. Regressive thinking ke saath jo desh aatangwaad ka political tool ke rup mein istemal kar rahe hain unhe ye samajhna hoga ki aatangwaad unke liye bhi utna hi bada khatra hai. Mr Modi said that it must be ensured that the Afghan soil is not used for terror activities without naming any country he said that some nations are trying to use the fragile situation in Afghanistan as a tool which must be stopped pointing at the relevance of the United Nations the prime minister said it needs to improve its effectiveness and enhance reliability he referred to the fact that questions have been raised about its role in the origin and handling of covid crisis climate crisis proxy wars and the developments in afghanistan in this background he called for global order and to strengthen global laws and global values referring to the maritime security mr modi underlined the need to have rule based order he said we can take a leaf out of the un security council resolution passed under the presidency of india highlighting india's strides in covid care the prime minister said india not only successfully tackled the challenge but now exporting the vaccine to the needy countries he urged the vaccine manufacturers to come and make vaccines in india main unga ko ye jankari dena chahta hu ki bharat ne duniya ki pehli dna vaccine viksit kar li hai jise 12 साल की आयु से ज्यादा के सभी लोगों को लगाया जा सकता है एक और एम आर एन ए वैक्सीन अपने डेवलपमेंट के आखिरी चरण में है भारत के वैज्ञानिक कोरोना की एक नेजल वैक्सीन के निर्माण में भी जुटे हैं मानवता के प्रति अपने दायित्व को समझते हुए भारत ने एक बार फिर दुनिया के जरूरतमंदों को वैक्सीन देनी शुरू कर दी है citing the example of how the government's program reached to the last mile with the use and help of technology mr modi told that india has clearly shown to the world that democracy can deliver sabse lambe samay tak i will soon gujarat ka spent 20 years serving my countrymen as head of government first as the longest serving prime minister of gujarat and then as prime minister for the last देशवासियों की सेवा करते हुए 20 साल हो रहे हैं और एंड मैं अपने अनुभव से कह रहा हूँ टू यू फ्रॉम माई ओन एक्सपीरियंस यस डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर डेमोक्रेसी कैन डिलीवर यस यस डेमोक्रेसी हैज डिलीवर्ड He said that it is the strength of India's democracy that a person of humble origins rises to the ranks as the prime minister of the country after starting his journey as tea seller at a railway station. The prime minister said that the global economy needs diversification and hence we need to expand the global value chain. It requires a democratic and reliable partner which India can provide. However, it is required to have a balance in economy and ecology. He stated that reforms in India would help in transforming the world. When India reforms, the world transforms. Bharat mein ho rahe science aur technology aadharit innovations, vishwa ki bahut madad kar sakte hain. Hamare tech solutions ka scale aur unki kam lagat dono atulniy hai. Hamare unified payment interface (UPI) aaj Bharat mein har mahine 
350 करोड़ से ज्यादा ट्रांजेक्शन हो रहे हैं ही क्वेश्चन दैट द ओशन रिसोर्सेज शुड बी यूज एंड नॉट अब्यूज एंड वी मस्ट बी वेरी ऑफ द डेंजर्स ऑफ एक्सपेंशन एंड एक्सक्लूजन मिस्टर मोदी अनाउंस दैट इंडिया इज डेवलपिंग द वर्ल्ड लार्जेस्ट ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन हब Prime Minister Narendra Modi returned home to a rousing reception after concluding a landmark visit to the United States. He was given a warm welcome at the Palam Airport this afternoon. BJP leader JP Nadda and other party workers were present to greet the Prime Minister. In today's hot spot section, we bring you a discussion on Prime Minister's visit to the USA, a new chapter in India-US and India Quad ties. In conversation are Reshma Tiwari journalist and Dr Atul Tiwari special correspondent of All India Radio who covered the prime minister's visit to the US Over the past 4 days we heard and saw Mr Modi interacting with US president Joe Biden Vice president Kamala Harris and the top industry leaders in Washington It was followed by the Quad summit with the heads of states from India Australia Japan and USA sharing the platform The visit concluded with the Prime Minister Narendra Modi's address to the UN General Assembly in New York. Atul, the visit started on a bright note with Prime Minister Modi and US President Joe Biden sharing positive vibes. What has been the outcome of the meeting of minds of the heads of states from the world's largest and the oldest democracies? Well, Rishma, the two leaders struck a right chord from the very beginning. Prime Minister Modi said the two nations with shared democratic values are natural allies and will work for a peaceful, secure and better world. Both the leaders resolved to advance the US India comprehensive global strategic partnership. US President Joe Biden praised India's COVID management and said both the nations hold similar views on a free, open Indo-Pacific which should be resilient, climate crisis, quad and a host of issues we believe in a free and open indo-pacific because we know that's what delivers a strong stable and prosperous region so our citizens our peoples can realize their hopes and dreams for their futures in a liberal and free society the quad is about demonstrating how democracies such as ours as you said mr president can get things done the leaders came out heavily against the terrorists and their perpetrators the joint statement issued after the meeting between president biden and prime minister modi said united nations security council resolutions on terrorism must be respected in letter and spirit they said no country should allow terrorist activities from its soil or provide any logistical financial or military support to terrorist outfits which could be used to launch or plan terror attacks they had a word of caution for afghanistan and the taliban rulers that afghan soil must not be used to threaten or attack any country or to shelter or to train or to fund the terrorists president biden welcomed the announcement by india that it will resume export of covid-19 vaccines including to covax he also promised india to accelerate clean energy development and deployment of critical technologies to advance a clean energy transition the two leaders agreed to expand cooperation in areas of critical and emerging technology space cyber health security semiconductors artificial intelligence 5g future generation telecommunications technology and blockchain president biden and prime minister modi celebrated the deep and vibrant ties between the people of the two nations Another significant aspect has been the interaction of the prime minister with US vice president Kamala Harris Tell us what transpired in the talks. Mr. Modi and Kamala Harris discussed the COVID-19 situation and the ongoing efforts to contain the pandemic. The American Vice President appreciated India's vaccination drive and how it has now moved to export vaccines for humanity. On COVID-19, our nations have worked together. Early in the pandemic, India was a vital source of vaccines for other countries. When India experienced the surge of COVID, in the country the united states was very proud to support india in its need and responsibility to vaccinate its people and i welcome india's announcement that it will soon be able to resume vaccine exports it is a particular note and admiration that india i'm told is currently vaccinating approximately 10 million people a day 
Both leaders agreed that India, US and Quad need to strengthen the supply chains and partner in new technologies. Regional and global issues figured in the talks. India and USA, both the countries have suffered most during the COVID-19 pandemic. World also felt the heat. How the leaders of the two countries responded to it in their conversations? Reshma, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said that at Quad's request, India would make available 8 million doses of Johnson & Johnson's Janssen vaccine manufactured in India by Biological E. This would be ready by October end and will be compatible with India's decision to resume vaccine support. Mr. Modi also expressed thanks for the solidarity shown by U.S. government and the people of U.S. when India faced second wave of crisis. President Biden appreciated India's role that has extended assistance to countries across the world through pharmaceuticals and vaccines. Quad leaders have also announced their decision to step up Quad Vaccine Initiative under which vaccine will be made in India while technology and financing worth 1 billion US dollars will be provided. These vaccines would be distributed to the last mile. The bilaterals are equally important in any foreign visit. What we saw this time was the leaders from Australia and Japan sharing their mutual concerns with India. Can you give a sense of it? Rishma, Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a bilateral meeting with Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison on the sidelines of Quad Leaders Summit in Washington. During the meeting, the Prime Ministers discussed a broad range of issues of bilateral, regional and global importance. They noted the successful outcome of recently held first India-Australia Foreign and Defence Ministers 2 plus 2 dialogue. They reviewed the progress achieved since the leaders' virtual summit. Both the leaders resolved to continue close cooperation for mutual well-being and towards their shared objective of an open, free, prosperous and rules-based Indo-Pacific region. They expressed satisfaction at the ongoing negotiations on a bilateral comprehensive economic cooperation agreement or the SICA. Both sides are committed to reach an interim agreement by December this year. Both leaders also discussed possibilities of providing clean technologies. The Prime Minister of India and the Prime Minister of Japan held discussions on several issues. These include ways to further give impetus to trade and cultural ties. They discussed a range of issues including Indo-Pacific, regional developments, supply chain resilience, trade, digital economy and people-to-people -people ties. The Quad Summit has its own dynamics with four top leaders of the world at one platform. What message did they give and how effective will it be? Krishma, the Quad group of four nations held its first in-person meeting in Washington. Prime Minister Modi said Quad is a force for global good and the discussions with Quad leaders were extensive and productive. He recalled how the four nations met for the first time after 2004 tsunami to help the Indo-Pacific region. And today, when the world is combating COVID-19 pandemic, Quad countries have come together once again for the welfare of humanity. President Joe Biden said Quad Group has democratic partners who share a similar worldview and have a common vision for future. He said the Quad Group is coming together to face key challenges of the recent times. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison said, Quad is about demonstrating how democracies such as these four nations can get things done. In his opening statement at the Quad Summit, Mr. Morrison said, there is no part of the world that is more dynamic than Indo-Pacific at this time. Japanese Premier Yoshihide Suga said, the Quad nations cherish their shared values. He pointed out whether it is regional issues or issues like COVID, Quad has addressed many of them. Mr. Suga said, till date, Quad has given its absolute cooperation in big sectors. Lauding the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and President Biden, he said, Indo-Pacific must be free, open, inclusive and resilient for peace and stability in the region. Atul. If we look at the overall picture, issue of terrorism and Afghanistan figured prominently in the talks. Can you think of a better future for the war-ravaged nation? How did the Prime Minister and world leaders handle it? Reshma, Prime Minister Modi, President Biden and Quad leaders in their meetings 
came out strongly against terrorism. They denounced any use of terrorist proxies and emphasized the importance of denying any logistic, financial or military support to terrorist outfits which could be used to launch or plan terror attacks. President Biden, in a joint statement with Prime Minister Modi, said the perpetrators of 2611 Mumbai terror attacks must be brought to justice. Well, this reference has been seen in the context of Pakistan using the Afghanistan border for harboring, training and funding the terrorists. Analysts say it is an indictment of the policies of Islamabad. In the context of Afghanistan, Prime Minister Modi, President Biden and the Quad leaders minced no words in categorical terms. The leaders made it clear that Afghan soil must not be used to threaten or attack any country or to shelter or train or fund the terror outfits. Industry leaders play important role in shaping up the future. With the advent of new emerging and critical technologies, the CEOs interacting with the Prime Minister, what impact can we foresee? The CEOs meeting was aimed at giving a boost to make in India and exports through trade and investments. In 2019, overall US-India bilateral trade in goods and services reached 149 billion US dollars and efforts are on to enhance it. Top five industry leaders from diverse fields met Prime Minister and assured him to join in the India growth story. Qualcomm President and CEO Cristiano Amon expressed enthusiasm to work with India in digital transformation programs such as 5G, pm one and others. He also expressed interest in partnering with India in the field of semiconductors. Prime Minister assured Qualcomm that India will proactively work on the proposals made by them. He said that India has prepared 5G standards and urged Qualcomm to actively participate as they did in the case of Navik project. The Prime Minister also said that since Qualcomm has trusted Indian talent already, it can now trust Indian talent and start manufacturing with the advantage of the production-linked incentive scheme. Mr. Modi also spoke about the new liberalized drone policy and said Qualcomm could take part in the new opportunities in the emerging market. Another productive meeting the Prime Minister had was with Shantanu Narayan, the CEO of Adobe. He appreciated the efforts of India in fighting COVID and particularly in the field of rapid vaccination. He expressed interest to contribute in India's 75th anniversary of independence and to bring video and animation to every child in India. The Prime Minister said that bringing smart education to every child is important and that makes technology very important. He said that in COVID era, the ground for digital education has been laid and we should now move forward. Both emphasized on creating a few centers of excellence in artificial intelligence in India. The Prime Minister and Mark Widmar, the CEO of First Solar, had a good interaction. Mark Widmar expressed happiness with the Indian policies for climate change and related industries. Prime Minister spoke about One World, One Sun and One Grid initiative and its potential. He referred to India's ambitious target of 450 gigawatt of renewable energy. He also emphasized on India's focus on manufacturing for solar energy. He also spoke about India's green hydrogen mission. The CEO of First Solar and the Prime Minister both agreed on enhancement of the manufacturing of solar power in India. The CEO of Blackstone, Stephen Schwarzman, said his company has plans for investment in India and will further ramp it up. The Prime Minister said there is a huge scope for further expansion of Blackstone's partnership in India. He specifically spoke about the asset monetization and urged Blackstone to invest in India. During the course of the visit, you would have interacted with experts from various fields. What is their take on the visit? Experts are of the opinion that the visit holds a lot of potential and with the intent of the government, they are quite hopeful of further expansion of India-United States and india Quad ties. Anatul, last but not the least, what has been the response and the reactions from the Indian diaspora in USA? The Indian diaspora has been quite a beat. They expressed hope that the relations 
will gather a fresh momentum and the two nations can explore new areas of cooperation for a better tomorrow every visit has its own expectations and outcomes the leaders and their policy prescriptions make the difference and more so when they are grounded in reality guided by wisdom and the foresight for a better tomorrow a new chapter is all set to be written in the realms of geopolitical arena by the forces of global good in tandem with the world's largest and the oldest democracy This is All India Radio giving you the world news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has extolled the virtues of river conservation and greeted the country on World Rivers Day today. Addressing the nation in his Man Ki Baat program on All India Radio, the Prime Minister said, "World Rivers Day is in sync with traditions that the people of the country have been following for centuries." He highlighted that rivers do not drink their own water but give selflessly to others. In the very banks of these rivers, numerous festivals, occasions and functions are held by people. With the advent of the month of magh people perform kalpavas on the banks of the river ganga or other rivers for an entire month snan karte samay ek shlok bolne ki parampara rahi hai gange cha yamune cha iva godavari saraswati narmade sindhu kaveri jale asmin sannidhi kuru pehle hamare gharon mein parivar ke bade ye shlok bachcho ko yaad karwate the aur isse hamare desh mein नदियों को लेकर आस्था भी पैदा होती थी विशाल भारत का एक मानचित्र मन में अंकित हो जाता था नदियों के प्रति जुड़ाव बनता था जिस नदी को मां के रूप में हम जानते हैं देखते हैं जीते हैं उस नदी के प्रति एक आस्था का भाव पैदा होता था The Prime Minister praised all the people who have dedicated themselves to rejuvenation of rivers. He also said that river festivals must be held at at least once a year on the banks of the rivers. In Germany, citizens were heading to the polls today to vote in a closely fought federal election that will in the coming days or weeks result in a new chancellor at the helm of the country. 67-year-old Chancellor Angela Merkel, after almost 16 years in the top job, will step down. Once it becomes clear who her successor will be, polling predictions on Saturday suggested the race was too close to call, with the centre-left Social Democrats (SPD) holding a small but narrow lead over Merkel's party, the centre-right Christian Democratic Union (CDU). Candidates who are in the fray to replace Merkel are Armin Laschet, a long-time ally of Merkel and the leader of the CDU since January, Olaf Scholz, leader of the left-leaning SPD and the Greens, and Alina Baerbock. Environmental concerns and economic worries have emerged as key issues in campaigning. Union Finance and Corporate Affairs Minister Nirmala Sitharaman today said India has an export target of 2 trillion dollar by 2030 and said the banks will have to play a pivotal part in achieving the same. Speaking at its 74th annual general meeting of the Indian Banking Association in Mumbai today, Ms. Sitharaman said India aims to achieve a target export of 2 trillion dollar by 2030, of which 1 trillion dollar is merchandise export and 1 trillion dollar is services export. She added that the target cannot be achieved unless banks are going to be nimble with sound understanding of various businesses and sectors. India has asked China to avoid shifting goalposts and not to confuse managing the border affairs with the larger issue of the resolution of the boundary question which is dealt with by different designated mechanisms addressing the fourth high level track to dialogue on China India relations held on Thursday India's ambassador to China Vikram Misri said that for long the Indian and Chinese sides have adhered to a well understood distinction between resolving the boundary question and managing border affairs Cyclonic storm Gulab over the northwest bay and adjoining west central bay moved further westwards over the same area in Bangladesh at 12 noon on Sunday the cyclone was centered about 750 km southwest of Chottogram port 725 km southwest of Cox Bazar port 590 km southwest of Mongola port and 605 km southwest of Paira port said the med department of Bangladesh in its latest bulletin 
Under the nationwide vaccination drive, more than 85 crore 60 lakh COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered in India so far. The Indian Health Ministry said over 28,000 new cases were reported in the last 24 hours. The recovery rate currently stands at 97.77%. India is all set to achieve the 100 crore COVID-19 vaccination mark. In a tweet, Mr. MyGov India said to celebrate the 100 crore vaccination mark, it has invited people to design an innovative and visually striking logo or mascot. It said the logo or mascot should represent the theme India's journey of completing 100 crore vaccinations. In the second IPL cricket match of the day, chasing the victory target of 166 runs, Mumbai Indians were 97 for 5 and 14 overs against Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai when reports last came in. Put into bat first, Bangalore posted a score of 165 for 6 in the stipulated 20 overs with the help of Glenn Maxwell's 56 of 37 balls and Virat Kohli's 51 of 42. Earlier in the first match, which was played at Abu Dhabi today, Chennai Super Kings defeated Kolkata Knight Riders by two wickets in the last ball thriller. Now, let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. The Guardian says Germany goes to the polls to decide Angela Merkel's successor. The Washington Post writes, Amtrak train derails in rural Montana, leaving three dead, dozens injured. Gulf Times reports China welcomes Huawei executive home to draw hugs Canadians freed by Beijing. Financial Times says Biden agenda on the brink as lawmakers dig on debt limit and spending. Wall Street Journal reports New Orleans breathes a sigh of relief as unusually crisp weather rolls in. And Sputnik News reports Merkel's potential successor Laschet reveals his vote preference in election blunder rights. A quick look at the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi asserts at UNGA that when India reforms, the world transforms. Mr. Modi calls upon people to celebrate river festivals at least once a year. Says in his Monkey Bad program, economic cleanliness ensures the right of poor and eases their lives. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman says India has an export target of $2 trillion by 2030 and banks will have to play a pivotal part in achieving it. Polling is underway in Germany to elect the new Chancellor. And in IPL cricket, Chennai Super Kings beat Kolkata Knight Riders by two wickets at Abu Dhabi. Second match between Royal Challengers, Bangalore and Mumbai Indians underway in Dubai. India is celebrating 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. Before we end, let us listen to his favorite bhajan, Vaishnav Jan by artist from Bhutan. Vaishnav Jan With that, we end this bulletin. We'll be back at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News.